So uh, today we are going to talk about uh, a pretty interesting and another controversial topic, and that's why we, it's a high performance matrix with mutable counters. And uh, the reason why I say it's a, it's a bite of the forbidden fruit is because it's something um, rather non orthodox for um, airline and mixer and any, uh, any language of the game in general. Uh, you know, um, language on the beam, everything is immutable, and um, everything is, uh, every, you know, the, one of the main staples is that every, uh, all the variables are, are immutable, and it's very safe for concurrency. And um, the ways to communicate between processes, you can do it through mostly message passing, uh, so we end up with. Uh, Messages is the processes send messages to their to the, their mailboxes and that's how they communicate. There is no shared state whatsoever. We can also have uh, shared. Uh, we can also uh, look at variables or, or or data or information through add tables or media, uh, but there is no uh, global state that any any processes and uh, on the beam or on the languages on the beam can access. So um, what we, we, we so what we needed for uh, I work for a company uh, called Zapto. We'll talk about it in just a second. So we needed um, a matrix collection for a high throughput application. So Zapto, for example, is where we have like ten thousand connections, each sending ten messages per second, and we collect a lot of different statistics. We just we collect like, how many total requests. Uh, the, uh, how many total requests, how many total sends, and then we also define it further by so request type, and then we also want to collect what kind of errors we, we've, we've been experiencing rather than logging that. We would just have much better visibility in the system if we just kind of uh, counted up the errors of certain type and saw all the incidents happening. So we have a lot of, we rely heavily on the on the matrix, and uh, we have very high throughputs. And for us, the uh, existing libraries didn't work, so we were looking into uh, something uh, else. So let me talk a little bit about Zaptum. Um, Zaptum, we are uh, Zaptum, we are creating an, an internet for things. Everybody is familiar with IoT, the term internet for uh, internet internet of things. That's when the Devices are communicating over the existing internet. The internet was designed for people, and it's inherently insecure. All the security is sort of like patched, like slapped on top, but it's not secure. It's not. It was not built with security in mind. And it's cool, I guess, with people, but the, the device, it's a little scary. Um, so also the other main thing about internet not being suitable for devices is it's been optimized for download and it has non deterministic response time. You can't really ever guarantee the response time because they are um, in the internet. You can't guarantee that there is not going to be a contention somewhere to slow down your uh, request. So uh, devices are very different use. We see devices are very different use than, uh, use case than people. So at Zaptum we created this. We call it Zaptum Net. It's uh, a network designed uh, for things from the start. And its main feature is built-in security. Nothing anonymous flows through this, through this network. Everything, all the devices that are going to communicate through it are already known up front. As well as, as well as subscribers, the uh, applications that might be reading the device the data. It's uh, opt optimized for upload from the start, and it has deterministic message transfer because obviously, if we know all the devices up front, we will also not know, uh, we will also allocate just enough resources for them to communicate. So it was designed specific for devices, and it's a very interesting project to work on. And we did test it for very high throughputs. So existing um, uh, libraries didn't work for us um, with such high uh, so existing metrics libraries, but didn't work for us with this high throughputs. And it's extremely 
it was extremely important for us uh, that, that they work. So let's uh, now that we're going to go back a little to um, the problems that we, run, uh, we can run into when uh, in high throughput applications. So message passing is a it's a great thing. It allows us to do, to do away without uh, mutable variables, and it's very uh, safe uh, for concurrency. But the problem was that uh, the problem was that mailbox control. So imagine we have a matrix collate. We're going to go to a very simple, like very that simple and kind of that solution for our case, but just to understand from this perspective. Imagine a matrix collector gen server. You guys are all familiar with the user I understand you know what gen server is, right? Um, so imagine a matrix collector gen server. So like thousands of processes are, or those 10,000 of processes are sending updates about, it's about their, their metric updates to that guy. Um, what, what's going to happen, obviously, very quickly, is mailbox is going to be filled. And then the response time becomes crazy, crazy slow. So the, one of the hugest barriers in uh, programming early or weak is that you have to be careful uh, not to overwhelm any process mailbox. You have to understand what is, uh, you know, you have to understand what's going to be happening there. And, um, so we could maybe introduce a hierarchy of matrix collectors sending uh, sort of kind of tripling down to the main one. So you, the processor will be sending to like some a pool of 100 matrix collectors and those who aggregate and send further up the chain. That's also sort of like a solution that came to mind at first. But I think eventually you'll still end up with the same problem of process mailbox being overwhelmed somewhere if you don't, if you miscalculate. You have to be very careful like setting up a big enough pool and if your system is under load and which you haven't expected, suddenly uh, this becomes a problem again. You see what you, uh, if you, if you see what I'm talking about. So another uh, way to, to keep uh, to update matrix and forget about so let, let's forget about this gem server approach. Let's look at um, at stable. Uh, you can keep your metrics and updates to a net stable. That's actually a much better approach, and that's what Axonita is using. One of the popular metrics libraries in an airline. And I think Elixir of, Elixir can use all the libraries that Erlang is using, so it's the same. It's, when I say Erlang, uh, in, in, this, in the context of this presentation, it's pretty much, uh, you can think uh, Elixir as well. I'm just an uh, Erlang developer, but I've done Elixir on this. All the libraries available in Erlang are also available in Elixir. So what the problem is now, the problem that we are faced with uh, with that stable is that we have stable uh, level write logs. So if a, a bunch of processes are trying to write to an edge table, um, they'll, they'll, it will be very uh, difficult because uh, every time they write in the table, the whole table gets locked. And um, so only one process can write to the table at a time. Even if we, so even if we create a table for each metric, it still, it still will be a, a problem when too many processes are trying to write just one uh, metric. So we started with, uh, like I said, we started with Exometer, which is a very popular metrics library in Erlang, in Elixir as well. And um, it was, it worked great for us with lower throughput. It's a very nice library. But when the system load became very high, and we actually did, and we started having some problems with our you know design inside at that time. Uh, we needed to see the metrics. The metrics would disappear. They would be very small. They would show up once in a blue moon. We really had no visibility into our system. So those the the problem was that so while the exhibitor itself was fine, the at table level locks were slowing down to the point that it was useless for us. We couldn't see the statistics where we needed them the most. So when existing solutions don't work, what do we do? We roll your own. Uh, and that's what we started looking into. 
So now that we kind of explored the possibilities for Marley, it was uh, we have we have said, we have some C developers in the company like where it's up to we have both Erlang and C plus C plus plus developers have their own matrix solutions and they were like you know we should have those we should have, we should be able to have mutable counters at least so uh, one of my coworkers uh, who's a brilliant uh, uh, engineer in, his name is David Bill he was uh, he was he said you know everything is great about Erlang but when it comes to matrix. Mutable counters are kind of really important. It's, it's, it really makes it, uh, that's that's where we can get high performance metrics. So he uh, looked for something in our way, and he indeed found uh, something. It was already there. Otherwise, we would have to come up with our own. And there was uh, there was a repo created by a company that 360. I think 360. Yeah, and they they also have very high throughputs uh, as their use case. Uh, they're sports betting company. So they created this uh, repo called OneUp. And what OneUp uh, is a very simplistic repo. It's just a bunch of lifts. And uh, they allow you to create uh, mutable counters, the forbidden fruit, remember, in Erlang. So there is a very few, it's a simple repo, but it's a, it's a gem for us. Uh, it was a gem for us, um, for our case. Uh, so we can create a new counter. You can create, you can increase the counter, and that's going to be mutable. So many processes can have, uh, can do, can um, many processes can increment this counter at, uh, uh, without message passing or at stable lookups. And uh, so that it has increment by one, increment by a certain value, and then you can also set to a specific value, and then it will return the overall. So it's just a bunch of very useful, very simple, very simple myths. The one thing you to notice is that my counter will be a reference. So you can't look it up from a central location anymore. And we'll talk about the challenge with that just a little later. But the cool thing is now is this one up repo, we don't have to, you know, either send we don't have to send uh, our updates to a central gem server or to any mailboxes where they're at risk of being filled, or to add stable, which also is the right table while the level of uh, locks so gets uh, very slow when we try to send thousands and thousands of, of, of updates very quickly. So great, we got rid of, uh, we actually can get rid of bottlenecks altogether with this mutable uh, reference counters. Uh, and we decided to build our own uh, metrics library on top of the one-up repo. We actually took it a step further. Uh, we already had metrics, uh, we already used the semicolon, and, so and it's very popular, so we decided to sort of take the best of both worlds, and we created a library called one-up metrics. Um, so the big challenge, as I mentioned, was the reference counter. Now we can, it's, it's great, it's mutable, we can, uh, we have this mutable counter, all the processes can update uh, from wherever they are, but how do we, how would the processes get hold of it if there is no central place to get it from? So uh, that's the, that's the airline challenge, it's sort of like a very upside down world kind of challenge for airline. It, usually you don't have to deal with it, so our library has, uh, our library, because of that, is a little. Uh, well, it was very easy for me to actually get it to work, and it works great. Was uh, this approach worked great um, with the uh, with our existing high throughput tests? Everything was great, except for once we decided to open source it and make it a friendly API. That's when it became a little hairy. It's uh, not so. It's it's great. Uh, it's performing great, but API is a little difficult. So the idea we had was to just uh, pass the reference counters around to the processes that will be updating them. And to make it a little more organized, this is what we did. So configuration of your metrics is very similar to exhibitors. It has, um, if you look at the right hand side here, it has the a list of uh, atoms as your metrics name, a specific metrics name, for instance, not uh, like 
number of incoming requests, you know, just say um, yeah, uh, request received or something uh, in the uh, list of atoms. And then what we do, we are going to convert this. Um, we are going to convert this configuration into a hierarchical map. So the map of ha uh, the config has uh, the type of metric, and the type of metric has to be a uh, matrix uh, implementation behavior implementation, which we'll talk about in just a second. So we convert it to a hierarchical map that will have the reference counters in it. And this is on the right hand side. And every process can be passed this map. And they'll just basically have the, they'll always have, so the process that, that are central, like the process that's receiving TCP request, will be handing this map, will have this map, uh, and then we'll be handing uh, the map further to the processes that are uh, actually processing the request. And hopefully that's clear. It's a little, it's a, a bit of a difficult idea to understand. Uh, for Erlang or Elixir developers, because we don't ever have to do such a thing. Um, and this map doesn't, you don't have to pass the whole map, you can always, you can pass a subset uh, that's relevant for a specific process. So you can, so we, I made the library such that it's very easy to grab a subset of uh, metrics from, um, from the original configuration, which is basically say, hey, I need this map with a specific prefix. And that's what I'm going to pass on to the next process because it's likely to update uh, this set of metrics. And so let's move on. So one of metrics behavior. So we, there is a module one of metrics. It's a gem set error, uh, which uh, maintains this configuration and it kind of looks over all the metrics that we, that we have. And then it's also a, a behavior. And uh, in that metric is where metric when we decide what kind of reference counters we create. For like a really simple counter, all you need is just one reference counter. For meter, uh, for gauge as well, we just need one reference counter. But for histograms, it became a little more complex. We actually needed uh, a reference counter for values, a reference counter for, um, for the actual number of samples, also for min and max. So, the actual uh, implementation will decide what it needs, how many reference counters uh, it needs to, to actually maintain that metric. So init metric does just that. And then update is knowing what the reference counters are. It will update, uh, it will update, um, it will just, it, it knows how to update itself. Uh, sorry if it's a little unclear at this point, but we'll look at various um, metrics and connotations in just a second. So, like I said, we have one up counter, one up meter. It's based on drop wizard formulas, one up gauge, and one up histogram. And all none of these none of these um, metric implementations require a pool of values. And we actually histogram is not. A fully blown histogram because you will need a full of values for that. So, so we created some formulas to just sort of have a histogram approximation where you can just get away with nothing but reference counters and no pool of values because we don't want to deal with mutable pool of values. That's going to be a little more complicated and we don't want to um, store too much uh, around. So, um, there is a uh, so if, to, to make it to make a clear understanding, metric updates are very that's the very intensive process. That's where thousands of tens of thousands of processes will be updating those. And those are the guys who don't communicate to any gem server. They don't they don't hit any ads tables. They basically just are past the metrics map up front when they are created. So they have access to this mutable reference counters. So um, they are um, they know how to update them with the uh, with those callbacks. They update callbacks, and um, that's what one up metrics behavior is for. It's for updating the is is for providing the methods that are for high intensity uh, uh, the methods that will be used very uh, uh, often and very uh, intensely. 
and those are not going to form any, those are not going to have any bottlenecks with them. Except for, you have to understand that if, even if you have a atomic counter in C++, even that guy, is, that, even that can get slightly contended because you can't, like only one process can update at a time, except for it's very fast. Um, and until the guy who created one up metrics, uh, uh, sorry, one up repo, he has some very cool um, performance tests, and then he compares the performance of atomic C counter counter lifts versus the uh, at stable hookups, and uh, they're much faster. But in, in any case, so what we have is a very, um, very intensive. Uh, very methods to handle very intensive updates uh, from the thousands of processes. And then we have a much uh, uh, less demanding side of things, which is metrics aggregation and retrieval. So aggregation will be done every five seconds. That's fine. Nothing, no mailbox can get, will be filled from that. Uh, also metrics retrieval, we have an HTTP server or, or any kind of uh, anything that wants to see you know, introspect the metrics, any process you can create on top of it, how often are you going to move them up? Every second, that's not going to kill our system, right? We're talking about tens of thousands of requests per second, yes, that's a problem. But if we are just aggregating or just looking metrics up, that's not a problem. That's only happening, you know, once a second, once in five seconds, as far as aggregations. So for that, we have a GM server behavior that will, uh, so uh, all of these, um, all of these um, one-up metrics implementations we looked at before, they are both one-up metrics behavior, which is for the high-intensity processing, and then they also are a gem server that knows how to collect, uh, the, how to deal with these reference counters, how to uh, aggregate them for their specific purpose. Especially histograms are kind of interesting because every five seconds we'll be grabbing a um, Value count, value reference counter, and samples of the uh, reference counter. We will average them. We sort of apply a formula where, over time, older values are no longer as um, as important. So, uh, so this dual nature is very important to understand the, about this library is that it has this just the methods and then just and then the gem and then the gem server side of things. Uh, for things that are not very, uh, um, for, for things that are not very intense. Uh, so I hope you, I hope I got your interest to take a look at the library and maybe even use it if you are, uh, if you, you know, work with any high performance, uh, high throughput uh, applications. I hope you give us your our library a try. And um, now it's time for Q and A. I. I hope I did more or less a <laughs> good job explaining uh, our library and uh, I hope you guys have questions. Thanks, Irene. It was a great talk. Uh, okay. uh, any questions from the community? Um, Irina, I, I have a question. Um, I would like to first summarize uh, your talk. Um, so you, you're saying that um, in, uh, you had issues in collecting metrics because um, there were like enormous number of actors sending um, or gen servers sending message to uh, a single or, or uh, less number of actors and then the mailbox was getting full, which is not an ideal situation. And then uh, you guys evaluated some solutions like ETS tables um, ETS tables turned out to be like um, not with the right locking uh, granularity, I guess. So Excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, I can't hear like super clear. Is yeah, there a uh, way to like close it? In is that better now? Uh, can't hear me? Um, I can't, I couldn't hear very clear, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know, uh, you can't hear me? Not sure what to do. If you if you were near the computer, if you, if you, if you could speak closer to the computer. Maybe. Yeah, I am actually not comfortable. Um, 
Uh, so I just turn on my video. Yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay. I, I think probably I'll um, hand out the uh, a mic to the community if they have questions. So uh, the, my question is, um, you, you talked about um, the mailbox getting full uh, because a uh, lot of actors or thousands of actors were sending message to a single actor and uh, so you wanted to collect metrics and you guys tried ETS table uh, and ETS table had issues with locking uh, and locking the entire table and then you guys basically resolved to using uh, C++, I guess, native interfaces, right? So uh, my question is, um, why, I mean, can we model this solution in the actor with the, with the actors, um, as in um, because actors are supposed to scale. So, uh, is it a problem of actually modeling modeling the actors in such a way that we could actually uh, solve it in an actor way instead of going to a native interface, calling a scene? Um, so you're you're asking if we could get you know, like if we could solve this problem the pure aqua way, the pure. Um, after model, like if you just sort of stay within the after model and solve it uh, that yeah. way. Yes. Right? Yeah. So uh, I think I think it's possible, like for instance, uh, it's, it, so we couldn't think of, like the, the one idea I had was that hierarchical uh, approach where you basically have a pool of a pool of actors that would be hand handling the metrics, so basically you could just send to a pool of them. Uh, and then they would just sort of hand the metrics further down, so the central, the, the ultimate collector would not be getting input, the metrics from tons of thousands of processes. They would just be getting, um, so basically it was the hierarchy, if I go back to the, the little pyramid the picture I had. We didn't get, we, I was not, a, we didn't, I wasn't interested, with, I, I didn't get to implement it because it's first a bit complex and secondly, like I said, if you're suddenly your system load is uh, overwhelming in sorts, like maybe you're under a uh, dynamic service attack or something, something unpredictable happens. What happens in that situation, suddenly you get your mailboxes overwhelmed anyway because your pool size wasn't sort of, so you have to make this pool size huge at some point, the pool size of the metrics collector. Collectors it will be much larger, and if it, if you didn't make it large enough, suddenly you you know uh, suddenly you get the same problem with mailboxes. Then with ads tables, I think well, if let's say I created uh, one table for every metric, it sort of it becomes a little slower than it's still a little slower than immutable counters, but it's possible to it's I guess. It's, it's, I think it's better, so I think uh, Exometer just uses all, you know, all the metrics in one table, but if you had one table for, which is the idea, maybe I haven't tried that, but maybe if you had one entry for X table, you only, or your processor would be only struggling for the one metric that they're interested in, uh, but then, uh, I haven't tried it. I'm not sure what the drawbacks of that is. And uh, again, it would still be slower than the reference counters we have. But the, the, the reason why we decided to, like, you're sort of, on one hand, we are sort of breaking the actor model here, but on the other hand, it's a, just the reference counter alone is very, it's a very simple structure. It's so, okay, we are updating this central, uh, we are updating this mutable counter, but it's a very simple thing. It's not likely to cause big trouble uh, to your airline uh, or Elixir um, server. We are trying to avoid big myths, uh, these complexities, because once you introduce them, um, your system becomes as vulnerable as any C++ system. But if it's such a simple, simple use case and you test it enough, you probably don't have a problem. And uh, yeah, but the problem is that, like you said, it's very not like, it's very, the approach itself is very not like um, actor model. Because we are passing around these reference counters. 
uh, into the uh, into every. I mean, actually, it is okay. I mean, Erlang is actor model, so we got around to, to doing it. It's just a little. I, I find that API a little glitchy, so I'm kind of looking. That's that's why I want to share this library and maybe get feedback from people who will say, oh, we can maybe do something else and still use your reference counters. Basically, I don't want to give up on the reference on those mutable counters idea because it's very fast solution. In fact, we are, um, in fact, we are looking into even uh, take it even further and have uh, rather than having atomic mutable counters, have it or CPU counters, and then sort of aggregate them. So, and I'm not quite sure if it's going to be a big challenge aggregating those atomically. Those are going to be even faster because you end up not having a process struggling for the same uh, counter. So, uh, but I actually don't have a better solution at this point. This is basically a library that works for us, and I'm hoping to get like, feedback with better solution or something that's more digestible for um, after model. So if anyone has any kind of ideas or suggestions, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, next question. <coughs> uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, have you looked into the implement implementation of WANA and how they do um, atomic counting? Because I would imagine if uh, queuing in Erlang is a problem, um, why is it not a problem in WANAT? Because uh, since it's atomic, I assume there's some queuing there too. Uh, because the atomic is very fast, it's like a compare and swap approach. So there, there is no queue, there is basically just, they are just a little bit slower. They're just so fast, even though I agree that we had one, like, to your question, I have actually a situation where one of the metrics we were using was bombarded really hard, and that one became kind of slow for us, even with atomic counters. They're just much faster in C with, with uh, atomic counters in uh, C++. There is no, uh, it's a much lighter weight locking, like, just because it's a single counter, it uses this compare and swap, swap rather than uh, locking. So it's actually a much much faster. But if if it's it's still the same problem, uh, like you're just like you're saying, in the end, if the same a bunch of the same processes are trying to update it, it is going to be a problem. It's just that problem won't happen nearly as fast as it will with ad tables, or God forbid, mailboxes. Mailboxes become filled up and slow much much faster. So if I have, I wouldn't. Be able to tell you exact statistics on that right now, but if I had 10,000 processes right into our mailbox at the same time, it's going to be filled up very fast. If the same I'll do to add tables, it's going to be a little, it, it won't be causing a problem, it will cause a problem a little uh, slower. But if I did do this with atomic counters, it will also become a problem, but much, much later. So it's, all, it's not like the problem no longer exists, it's just uh, the problem becomes much, much less with those C++ ref, uh, mutable counters than compared to an airline process mailbox. You see what I mean? I totally agree with you that this, when you try to update the same thing, no matter what it is, where it is, and how it is constructed from tens of thousands of processes, at the same time, it will still be a problem. It's just this problem doesn't, mm, it doesn't manifest itself with these mutable counters for a long time. It's, it's a much more robust solution. Uh, but in the end, we actually, like I said, we had one metric type, one metric that was bombarded so hard that even that became slow, even with the reference, uh, with those mutable counters we had. Um, so for that, we have our kind of next uh, development, which has not been done yet, but I'm looking into doing that. It's, instead of having the atomic counters, you want to use a counter at the CPU level. So if you know you have like 24 CPUs or 12 CPUs, your configuration will be equal to the number of CPUs. So you'll have that many counters, as many counters as there are CPUs that will be eventually combined into one. But then it's a challenge how do you do that atomically. Uh, so that could be done atomically as an atomic counter itself. But uh, if you Every process in Erlang, it's actually kind of easy in Erlang because 
with the scheduler, uh, there is a, a way to get a process of queue number, and that's equal to the CPU. Actually, sorry, I don't have the slides for that because I, this is something I have not developed yet. It's just an idea that we are sort of considering to make our metrics even faster, having counters at the CPU level. So every process that will update the counter will only be accessing the counter, like something like my counter underscore one or my counter underscore two, and that will correspond to the queue number. And narrowing, it's very easy to retrieve the process queue number. And then it's easy to know how many queues are running. So we'll be actually, instead of one metric counter, I'll actually create 24 on the 24 CPUs, my, match, my counter on the score one, on the metric counter on the score two. And then I'll, during aggregation, I'll have to gather them all, and that might be a little tricky. But that's kind of next step we are looking into, is having CPU level counters. And that's again the idea that came from our C++ uh, guy who was actually working on metrics in C++ and he had that idea for uh, C++ but it's very difficult to implement in C++. He actually wasn't able to, not, maybe he just never got around to it. But it's very, it should be very easy to combine C++ and Erlang. So we are looking at some crazy things to do. <laughs> uh, but so far whatever we've done it really worked for us. Those uh, those one-up uh, uh, mutable counters are just much faster than ads or, you know, just the process mailbox. It's just, it, uh, it, yes, and in the end they will have the same problem as you're mentioning. Thanks, Irina. Uh, any questions? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Um, okay, Irina, I just have a last question um, regarding this problem. So it's really interesting that um, actors are um, probably taking more time, that's what you're saying, so uh, I think atomic counters were like kind of um, less expensive solution and pretty good as well for your scale. Mm -hmm. um, I have not done a lot of Erlang, but um, my question is, can can we use uh, some kind of a persistent queue, like for example, um, is Kafka, I'm not sure if they use like it's it's horizontally scalable uh, messaging queue. So can alarm system can uh, drop a message into uh, Kafka, and then uh, then you don't lose that message, and then uh, some other actors can take the you know the counter messages out and then do the aggregation. Just just asking if that kind of a. Oh, you're talking about using a this is like like a more sophisticated queue mechanism, right? Like Kafka. Yeah, so Kafka is horizontally scalable, so uh, I think the problem we have is uh, too many messages. Uh, uh, actor systems can be huge uh, in terms of scale, so if you have a horizontal scaling uh, persistent queue like Kafka and drop a message into the queue, can that be used or has that been evaluated uh, in your company? It's probably, um, probably a certainly, I, I could certainly like look into that. Um, Having a system. This is, a, I guess, an interesting idea we could look into. Okay. Um, yeah, probably Matrix doesn't. It's require. just, uh, I have a suspicion that nothing's going to be the top of counters. <laughs> <laughs> The internet connection is not stable anymore. Yeah, yeah, we're getting that too. Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm still with you, but um, I have a suspicion that nothing's gonna be, nothing's gonna be like even um, any kind of queue will actually not uh, beat the comparison of atomic, the uh, this kind of atomic counter with comparison as well. If I will start doing more complicated structures like for histograms with uh, in C++, then I probably will end up, you know, with performance that's not, you know, a winning performance. But just because those atomic counters, the way they are implemented, they are so fast, I'm not sure that, um, and I know it's a little kludgy to pass around this reference counters in the map to every process, but the way I created the one-up matrix um, Library sort of I try to make it very easy. So like there are methods in there that makes it makes it sort of easy. 
it's just behind the scenes that will put that map into a process um, into the um, process dictionary for you, and that's again a lot of a lot of times process dictionary is not advisable to use, but that's just a myth. You can really use it for a lot of good things. So I use process dictionary to slap them up into, and they sort of like get the. Uh, I guess I'm not answering the question anymore. I'm just uh, trying to say that hey, uh, we can you know we can sort of we can have this. Uh, it, basically, we don't have to restrict ourselves, but especially for the matrix use case, the matrix collection is a very different, it's sort of separate from your main application, so you, it's probably okay to break a little actor rule here. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely, uh, your suggestion that you could have much faster like your implementation that's not going to choke up like the mailbox, there's something to look into. I'm just suspecting that those atomic counters are the fastest thing you can find. <laughs> the ones that are these plus plus. You don't you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm sure that I'm sure there are better like you can have better implementation, like a mail and like process mailbox is not the fastest thing in the world, possibly. But no matter what, uh, I would say that having immediate like atomic atomic counter at your disposal, I mean if you're a process. It's probably the fastest thing you can think of. Um, sure. You could try to play with other kind of queue implementations and other things, but it's going to be more complicated. Uh, it's going to be a much more complicated solution, and it's probably still not going to be as fast. But definitely something to look into. Sure. I guess I'm not an ACA model purist anymore. Not, a, not, a, not since I created this library. I was before that, I swear. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, any question, guys? Yeah, I think we're good here. Uh, Irina, thank you so much uh, for really um, helping the community here, um, talking from Chicago, and um, yeah, so early for you, especially, <laughs> not being a morning person. So, thank you. Cheers. Thank you for listening. I hope I picked your interest for uh, listening to the library educated. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, guys. Enjoy the rest of your meetup. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye-bye.